Hi everyone, what a gorgeous morning. It is seriously frosty. Um, it's crisp and if I stand still too long, my shoes are sticking to the grass because it's so icy. It's uh, really crunchy and gorgeous. Blue skies. Can I show you the blue skies? So today I'm going to show you the terracotta pots that I have prematurely aged. So um, I've used yogurt to give them that lovely patina that they get when they've been hanging around in the garden in the damp for a while. And uh, let me show you what they look like now and what they looked like before and then I'll show you how we did it and it's such a simple process honestly you wouldn't believe it it's a really natural way to do it it's incredibly cheap it just costs the price of a pot of yogurt and um, you can eat the rest of it if you don't finish the pot <laughs> so <laughs> come and have a look at the pots because we left them hanging around a bit and they look fantastic we used new frost free terracotta pots from our local independent garden centre They've got a huge range in all shapes and sizes, but we chose a really simple shape in the largest size they had. These are about 40 centimeters in diameter and 35 centimeters tall. Uh, that's 15 inches diameter if you're using inches. As you can see, they started life in this bright orange color and although it looks smart, I think it screams, look at me, I'm brand new. Um, and I didn't want that. I'm not planning to use these pots for permanent display, but mostly for growing cut flowers, but I still wanted them to look pretty, so I decided that they'd look better if they were aged. The method we're using is really fairly straightforward. We just took an old paintbrush, but you can use a cloth or a rag or anything you like, and we painted the pots all over with yogurt. And this doesn't, and in fact, it really shouldn't be an even coat because nature isn't perfect, and so you don't want the pots to look too uniform. Like many things, um, terracotta pots take on character as they age and the clay darkens, but it also gets this whitish mottling from fertilizers and the minerals in water. And when the pots are kept in the shade and damp, they'll gradually become covered in like a greenish patina of algae and moss. Um, we also like grabbed some scraps of moss from the garden and rubbed the moss all over the pots just to encourage the algae and moss to grow by sort of leaving bits of debris on the pots. These pots are going to have our tulips in this year because we've got this huge problem in our garden where the badgers sniff out all the tulip bulbs and dig them up. They literally munch through them at night. So the only way we can successfully grow tulips is to grow them in pots heavily protected with chicken wire, which I'll show you if you keep watching to the end of the video. As you can see, it was raining really heavily, so we put some pallets on top of the pots to protect them from the worst of the weather because we didn't want the yogurt to wash off. And left, then we left them here for about a month um, they're in a shaded spot in the garden, so they'd only have had a few short periods of sun in the time that they were here. Basically, what you're needing to do is to create like a damp atmosphere so that it emulates the situation where nature would age the pots. Today is a very exciting day because just over a month ago, we tried to age our brand new terracotta pots by covering them in yogurt and moss, and we've left them to let them weather and I'm about to take a look and see what's happened. This is so cool. They look like they've been here for ages. They've got little bits of white speckling and a bit of moss still stuck on that bit. This is amazing. Wow, well, they've even got some damp inside, but some are quite black, but I actually don't mind that. They look really good. Time to pot up my tulips. I am absolutely thrilled. I have got 
two, four, six, eight, ten pots to plant up with tulips. Couldn't be more excited. Let's go. So the mix we used for the pots is two thirds of peat-free compost to one third of grit. We planted the tulips quite densely because they'll only stay in these pots for one season and then they'll be planted out in the garden next year. Even though most growers recommend planting tulips at twice the depth of the bulb, we planted them at about three depths of the bulb because if planted deeply, tulips are less likely to try and reproduce and make little mini bulbs and they're more likely to flower year after year. So just make sure none of your bulbs are touching um, you need to sort of put them, people call it like an egg box method, so you sort of scatter them at the distance they would be if you had them in an egg box and plant the tulips with the pointy side facing upwards. We covered the bulbs with the same mixture of compost and grit that we used to fill the pots. Um, we didn't use any crocs or stones for drainage in the bottom of the pots. If your pots have got one or more drainage holes then crocs just aren't necessary. But we did make sure the compost in the pots had good drainage because tulips really need effective drainage so that the bulbs don't rot. Um, tulips don't generally come back as large or as bright after their first season. So it can kind of be hit or miss if you replant them. So what we do is we scatter the bulbs um, after their first year we scatter them in the areas of the garden where they're not going to be like a feature and also where we don't mind if the badgers dig because the badgers can make a really big mess and wreck you know your nice smart beds and then we added some chicken wire you can see that we roughly cut it to size kind of a square and then we you know stuck the corners in the compost and used some garden staples to pin it down we used four garden staples in these pots and we pushed them you know as deeply as we could into the pot around the edge so you don't pierce the bulbs and then we covered the just to cover the surface we covered it with a bit more soil and then I added a layer of moss to make it look pretty but you don't have to do that um, if you've got soil on top you could use grit we then watered the pots once uh, very sparingly and set them aside in a sheltered and partly sunny spot to wait for spring uh, we left the pots on a pallet, but as long as the pots are able to drain, so you could leave them on gravel or grass, then they won't become waterlogged. But whatever you do, don't leave them on patio slabs unless you can raise the pots up on something like pot feet. You know, if you've got some bricks lying around, um, just make sure that the drainage hole isn't covered and has got somewhere to drain to. Um, I'm going to post a video later on once the tulips are blooming. So do subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the video. And uh, anyway, thank you so so much for joining me and watching and I'll see you all next time. Oh, I need to start that again. There.